Queen Beginner Embroidery Workshop Video 2. Hi tweens, we're back and last session we worked on the running stitch, which is a very basic stitch and practiced doing some of that around our hoop. Today we're going to learn three stitches, the back stitch, the split stitch, and the chain stitch. So to begin with, you're going to cut off a piece of your thread, your floss. You don't need to split it. Um, make sure you get your needle off of your card there where you're storing it for safety. You don't need to split it this time. I'm kept keeping mine thick so that you can um, see it better in the video. Go ahead and thread your needle. So, now the back stitch begins like the running stitch, in which you um, set your first stitch just like the running stitch coming up from the back. Making sure to leave a, a bit of a tail. Hold that in place. Nice consistent st stitch length is the key to the back stitch. So you're going to set your first stitch. And then you're going to come up an equal amount of distance away from that stitch. Like that. And you're going to go back to where your first stitch came in. Thus the name back stitch, because you're working backwards. And it gives you a nice solid line, a nice thick line. This is good for uh, outlining projects and bold um, shapes. Again, coming up a stitch length away. And moving back to where you came out of. It's your last stitch. If you don't like it, you can remove it. Like I think that one's a little short. So I unthreaded my needle and I pulled it out. That's the nice thing about not creating knots is that you're able to easily undo mistakes. So I'll thread my needle again. And I'm going to redo that stitch. That's better. Moving on, going to come up a stitch length away. And back down. And then you just move across your work, continuing on. You want to try and make sure it's centered along the, the last stitch you did. As you can see, this one got tangled up in the tail. Which can be a good way of anchoring your tail, if that's what you intend to do. So I'm going to fix this again. I'm going to pull that out a little bit. Unthread my needle. Untangle the tail, and I'm going to reset that stitch.
Remember, if you have trouble threading your needle, you can get your um, floss a little bit damp at the end, and it can help it go through the eye a little bit more easily. So it can be good to have a little bit of water next to you to dampen your thread, your floss. All right. Back down to my last stitch. That's better. Try to make sure that your stitches are the same size. But that's what practice is for, to get you to help you become consistent with this. more stitches there we go Trying to make sure I get my needle on my line so that my stitches are, are my lines are more or less straight. That's good. All right, it's easy to set the back of. Uh, Set your stitches there. Finish up going underneath the line. Like so. And trim that. And there you have the back stitch. Now if you want, you can practice this stitch in empty space around the rest of the hoop. You can make concentric circles. You can um, work wherever you've got empty space on the rest of this fabric. Next up today, we have the split stitch. And I'm gonna work on a line right there. Again, we're coming up from the back. And setting our first stitch again, a lot like the running and the back stitch. Your first stitch is just a normal line. There you go. But the split stitch, as in its name, is, uh, is called that because your needle comes back up through the middle. Well, not necessarily the middle, the first third of the stitch you just set. So your needle's going to come back up through that floss and then go back down a stitch length away. So you want to keep it to the first half of the floss instead of the back half so that it splits that way and back down. This gives you a more delicate appearing line than the back stitch. And it can be good for doing curves and um, things like uh, sleeves and stems. It's a pretty easy stitch to, to learn because you're just kind of coming up from the back there. There's not a lot of hard uh, technique to it. 
You do want to try and come up in the center uh, of the floss threads with not too many on one side, not too many on the other. And that's how it looks in the back. It's a little more shorter dots. Again, coming up. Splitting the threads of your floss. And then back down a stitch length away. This can be a little bit of an uneven look, uh, particularly if you're working with um, not a full set of um, threads of flo in your floss, which is why it's good for things like plants and other organic, natural looking um, projects. Some people will use uh, the split stitch as padding for the satin stitch, which we'll learn later. But that's a choice. And so there is your split stitch. And I can make sure my needle's coming up between the threads there. And finishing it off. And there's your split stitch. All right then, our last stitch for today is the chain stitch. As with the other stitches, you're gonna start from the back. Make a tail or leave a tail. And instead of moving forward, you're going to go back down through where you came out. But you're not going to pull it all the way through. You're going to leave a loop. When you first start out, you should keep the loop fairly big. And then come out a little ahead of your first stitch. And then through the loop, pull your needle. And that forms a secure loop. For the next stitch, you're going to go back down to your anchoring stitch where you just came out. Again, leave a loop. You may need your fingers to help keep it um, straightened out. Come a little forward. Make sure your loop is over the needle point. Floss likes to get twisted. And I'm butterfingers right now. So making sure your floss is over your needle point. Bring it up and through, and it creates your link in your chain. Back down through the center there. Again, leaving a loop. As you get more practice, you can um, leave smaller and smaller loops. Come forward with your needle, bring it through. Back down through the center. Leave a loop. If you, start, if you realize you've left too small a loop, you can hopefully use your needle to retract it a little bit, bring it back up. Otherwise, you might have to restart some of your stitches and then bring it through. There we go. A little bit more. And 
bring it up forward over the, through the loop and again it makes a nice looking neat chain chain stitch also helps you create a lazy daisy which I'll show you later on in the workshop bring it forward another stitch or two down through the center weave a loop bring your needle forward loop over the needle and bring it forward back down through the middle Chain stitch is a very decorative stitch. It looks good in a lot of designs. Bring it forward through the loop and down and back through the middle again. We'll do a couple more stitches and I'll show you how to finish it off so that it looks like it's a chain at the end. Bring it forward. down through the middle through the loop and back through like with all the other stitches you want to make sure they stay they're consistent in size which practice will help you with that now to finish it off We'll do one more here. Bring it up through the loop. Now, before you get all pull it all the way tight, you're going to go back down on the outside of the loop to anchor this last stitch. You can see there it's not in the middle again and I could have done that one a little better it's got the one end is a little uh, loose but that's okay so that is your chain stitch and then you can secure your work as usual That's it for this time. But remember, you can practice in any of the blank area around the edges of the hoop or on your other piece of fabric. And we'll see you next time.